and we are back. Chris and I are going to create some maps. So this is probably not going to be one of those more thought-intensive recordings where we're just kind of sitting here and throwing down something and seeing what works because Chris has an idea and we're trying to put that to paper. But yes, that should be pretty good. Unfortunately, it sounds like my sister and brother, despite knowing that I'm streaming, have decided to just take the dogs directly into the room above us and have them run around. So if you can hear that, we apologize for that. But, so Chris, do you want to give us roughly a rundown on the what you're planning in terms of the world itself, like, you know, structure, all that sort of stuff, main key points, I guess? So, um, I'm going for a kind of traditional um, old fantasy kind of yep. uh, idea. Quite Tolkienian, but... Um, quite based on uh, old myth and uh, how the world is perceived. Yep. So, so the flat first world, thing, flat earth, yeah. Yeah, because I find, you know, in too much fantasy that is like, oh, yeah, it's a planet, you know? Yeah, even though they and, probably wouldn't have thought it was a planet. Well, you know, even ancient peoples knew that the world was round. Fair. But most of them, like... The commoners who don't know shit. Yeah. Thought the world is flat. Yeah, you see, it's a map. It's like, oh, it's a big flat world. Yeah. No, that's not how that works. So I just think it's neat. Fair, fair. And you know, there are plenty of um, fantasy worlds that do flat worlds. Yeah. The other thing I think it's important to point out is you have stated in the past that you do like to keep the idea of the or the ideas of science. Separate from D and D, yeah. So, so I in, don't like having science in my D and D. Yep. So, for example, in my campaign, where logically thermite would melt through clay, yeah, you would say, well, no, or no. like, or maybe not necessarily through that, but yeah, like, I like, just I dictate not to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, uh, if someone goes, oh, if I uh, put a bit of uh, electrical magic into the um, into the water. And it'll separate it into hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> uh. Yeah, who would do that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, no, fucking water's water. Yeah, water is water element. But yes, so that's at least the idea for the most part. You can alchemically change water into steam by heating it. Yes, alchemically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, so having a separation there is also useful because, you know. It is one of those things where people are going to inherently, or players inherently, come in with knowledge of what the or what our world works like. So, you know, back then, before they knew about chemicals and stuff, it does kind of make sense that you know, if you're like, hey, yeah, we're using magic, like we're using heat to warm up this water. Mm. Alchemically, it's making steam. They wouldn't know exactly why. Like, it's not like they could be like, oh yes, well. Actually, water's made of a bunch of tiny little atoms that, when heat is put into it, it makes them move around. And that doesn't make no goddamn sense. I can't see no atom. What the fuck's an atom? Yeah, so that's a whole thing. Though theoretically, the idea of an atom, I do believe, has been around since the Greeks with um, at atomos, the tiniest theoretical thing. But yeah, so. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've got your main central land mass that's held together by the bit, by the pin, which is the other thing to talk about, yeah. I would imagine. So, um, the pin is, uh, so, uh, the world was a big spinning disc yeah. of elemental chaos. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually the gods were just like, huh, let's fucking hold that shit still and build on it. Yeah. And, um, so... Uh, one of the gods put a big old fucking pin right through the uh, through the world to hold it still. Yeah, and so that inherently that pin. So from what I'm, uh, from from my understanding, the pin is these is you'll be able to find it in every one of the planes since it yep. literally is struck through all the planes holding them together, yeah. which has them meaning. So the mo Despite movement. Despite me like, uh, obviously distancing this from science. Yeah. I do like the idea of the fourth dimension. True, yeah. So, this is like a four-dimensional pin. Yeah. So you have existence, and theoretically you can imagine different layers of the existence where yeah. all the planes are, which inherently is sort of 
dandy-esque anyways. Um, but yeah, so theoretically, and then going on to the whole thing of gods, to my understanding, I, I presume you're still sticking with the gods related to um, specific stats. So yeah. strength, dex, const, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so inherently that way it keeps it relatively simple. You could theoretically argue that they're, that they're gods of other things as well. But like lesser gods. Yeah. You have a god of athletics, a god of acrobatics. Like, you know. I presume there'd be ones of farming, but those are probably not gonna be necessarily too important in what mm. an adventurer would do. But oh, there you go. Yeah, so Extract. Yeah, so subtra- subtracting of course is to remove from the map. So I'm guessing you're making a bunch of islands. Yeah. I thought I'd just make a the Elven Isles while I was over here. Fair. So where the elves just chill out. So So the other thing is, to my knowledge, that you're going with if I'm not mistaken, it's each direction, each cardinal direction has a certain thing. Right? So north is heat, I'm pretty sure. No. That's the other because, way around. Yeah. Because um I'm going with uh, you know, very traditional. Yeah. Uh it's Kind of like a from a European uh, oh, right. so, perspective. So down south where the equator would be, it's more hot. Yeah. Okay, fair. Well, the equator here is... It'd be going theoretically across um, where the pin is. Yeah. So it's going across where the pin is. So in for a real world comparison, that would be... Uh, I don't know what that bit's called. Greenwich? Uh, no, that's... that's a, yeah, that's, that's a horizon. That's a... Vertical line. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a, a, a word for that line. What, the... The one that's halfway between... The equator, perhaps? The equator and... No, the halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Oh, right. It's like just the northern quadrant, essentially. So... Yeah, I've got sauce on me. Rip. If you haven't got sauce, then you lost. We can also get lost in the sauce. Not wrong. Um. Fuck. So. Yeah, just trying to. That just looks wonky. Yeah, that's the thing I would say when it comes to making maps is don't overthink it. A lot of the time, the thing to do is just slap down stuff until you eventually get get something you're confident with. Yeah, good enough. Yeah. So, the elves. Come from uh, the Eastern Archipelago. Yep. The Elven Isles. Yep. There's... Because that would be going near the Fey, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or, like, that would have a region of, like, higher Fey yeah. interaction. I think the Fey interaction comes from just the, there being more nature around. Yeah, inherently because of the Elves being there. Yeah, so... Elves preserving nature and all that jazz... You know, now that I think about it, inherently, certain races almost have layers of their own. Elves have, like, when there's enough of them, they have a layer in quotations of, like, this is where a lot of nature tends to grow better, you know, all this sort of stuff that goes along with that. Um, Dwarves probably inherently make their their area more mountainous, because they're already choosing a mountain, and then just from being there, they probably progress that sort of area in a way um humans i don't really know i'm just thinking of it in terms of like looking at it as a entity yeah um are there really mountain options here um wait click on it click on the mountain oh yeah so there's a bunch of different stuff you're just clicking between that one set of mountains now as i always say when it comes into um all this sort of stuff we are only using the free version but you can do a lot of stuff with the free version if you just get a bit creative. And I'm considering getting the premium version at some point. But, yeah. Need to just um, save up a bit of money for everything. Because there's a lot of stuff I want to buy at the moment. For one, need to get Fighter Pass 2 for Smash. Plus all this. Plus I also want to have a way to record me playing on the, on the Switch. Hmm. A lot of stuff, a lot of work. I'll get to it eventually. So, uh, I'm guessing you're using that as the pin? 
Yeah. Fair. That works. Because it makes sense that everything would be... Based around that. Yeah. Maybe make it a tiny bit smaller, I imagine. Because, keep in mind, I presume we're talking massive scale. Oh, it's not... That's not a two-scale thing. That's just uh, part of the map. Yeah, it's just a note of where it is. Yeah. Um, that's another thing that I thought I, I, it might be a good idea to talk about on the podcast is media that is good for... Or, like, what, which sort of media and what sort of stuff we would suggest if you want to get in that D&D mood mm. for, um, like, writing or playing D&D. Um, there's one... I'm pretty sure I've shown you the start of Grimgar. I think I'll mention that one on the next podcast because Grimgar, in my opinion, was a really good show for getting in that sort of D&D mood. But yeah, so inherently, I'm guessing this is like the major kind of parts of the land. Yeah, I'm just roughly drawing up the land. Yeah, because, well, the other thing to note is by not having a border that is like, you know, darkness, it does sort of imply well because i suppose no one who has seen the edge of the land probably has returned yeah i mean it depends on really what you want to go with that you could have astral dreadnoughts flying around or something <laughs> that'd be fucking brutal yeah well, uh i'd say you can travel to the edge of the world yeah like the uh, the elves live right on the fucking edge yeah um and um so uh and, you know, you can sail there, but that would be quite dangerous. Yeah. Being in a boat going near the fucking edge. Yeah. So, well, that's the question of how do you want to do it. Are you doing it like um, a lot of flat earthers describe it of there's like a wall that stops you? Or do you uh, want to just do no, it like it's, it's Minecraft chunk error, like chunk chunk sort of thing? Uh, yeah, you, it would be you like... You float too far off, you're just gone. The water's flowing off the edge. Oh, so shit. like a waterfall type thing. Yeah, Fair, like that. that makes sense. So, um, I'm guessing that same message to our group chat that we both got. Yeah. Mate, um, everyone cool. good tonight? Uh, gamer, Seb can't make it tonight. That's a bit of a rip. What a nerd. Um. And then Michaela just said, please make sure you rock up. Though I think Seb has, Seb came last time and the time before that when the other two didn't. I think so. So he's in a better place. Um, but yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, so that's something that I want to do in a campaign at some point is just having it where a um, where inherently by traveling across like or like you know doing a long travel, it's gonna take literally years of travel because it does somewhat make sense. Yeah. Because, you know, in a lot of our campaigns, we've done it where it's like, oh, to travel from town to town, or to get around, it's like a month most sort of thing. And then usually by then, theoretically, a lot of stuff has happened. Ooh, but... Look at that. Get some tiny, tiny islands. Tiny islands. Yeah. The other thing I'll note is that you can change the colour of the water later, once you've got everything set in stone where certain places are going to be higher up underwater than, you know, other bits. But yeah, having small, tiny islands is good. I do like that, but not for there. Fair. But yeah, that's... do you know what that reminded me of? What? So, a characteristic that I find people don't recreate enough is... Um, having, like, the tiny islands off the coast of the uh, the land. Like, up north, where, it, where all the land is been fucked up for millions of years by glaciers. Fair. You know? That makes sense. Well, because, yeah, the other thing to think about as well is, like, we don't really ever usually put it onto, like, into maps, but there are often quite a lot of, from my, from what I've noticed, there are often quite a lot of very tiny islands off, like, the outskirts of the main continent. Like, think of Australia, for example. It's got a bunch of different islands around the edges. Yeah, like, if you look at the north, like, Canada, Greenland, mm. uh, uh, Sweden, Norway, Russia. Yeah. Like, the top of there is just fucking torn up. Yeah, because I remember I was looking at uh, Alaska at one point, and Alaska's got, like, a ton of different waterways that kind of break up the land. It's 
very different than what I would have, what what I would have initially imagined. And then also there's the whole biome map thing that there there is to think about. Yeah. But yeah, I think the ma- main important thing is getting the shape of the islands down. Yeah. Once you're happy with the shape, that's when I'd say add in tiny little bits and pieces generally. That's at least personally how I do it. Um, Incarnate seems to be offline. That's less than ideal. Because it seems the stream is still going, so maybe the internet's just being a bit of a, uh, being a bit of a twat. Given, I mean, we are still uploading the videos, which, oh well, that's fine anyways. But yeah, the idea is essentially I want to stockpile on some footage. So if there is a bit of time where I'm not able to stream because I'm working on assignments over the next little while, that I can just throw stuff up and just be like, hey, yeah, go watch the video I just put up. Because now we're getting into the back half of the semester, I'm going to start having to deal with, um, you know, assignments and stuff popping up. So we've got a big assignment due for basically each one of my classes, I'm pretty sure, which is kind of annoying. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me look back at the reference. Fair. In the meantime, I'm going to start creating a um, our our layout for what's it called for the next podcast that we do whenever we film that next. I was talking to Xander, and um, mm. I don't know if I've mentioned it to you, but uh, he gave the suggestion that perhaps we should do a full episode for each class. And then he made the point, essentially, that classes have quite a lot to look at. Yeah, they do. So that might be the idea, instead of breaking one recording up into a bunch of different stuff. Since, I mean, we can look at a... um, We looked... Last recording or last podcast, we looked at, like, three custom things and gave our opinions on that, and that took us, like, an hour and a half sort of thing. So we could probably manage to fit a class per thing. And he said his favourite class was actually Rogue, which was quite odd. Mm. Didn't take Xander for a rogue player but yeah that's pretty interesting um docs google docs let's see ah excellent docs has a dark theme now very nice oh that's spicy I like that okay whoop But yeah, um, so I think, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can work with with the next podcast. Um, if we're doing classes, then then inherently we've got like 12 episodes instead of like the four that were planned. So that can keep us carrying, that can carry us for quite a while. Um, then talking about modifying the game and suggestions of things to add and remove possible because we've talked about having extra skills so for example um there's something i saw a while ago that was talking about like a um like a renown almost where it was like Mm -hmm. um for like the dwarves and elves they would have like a renown of two so within their respective locations they would be much more well known and received rather than like an orc which would have like a negative one to renown Humans would have a zero sort of thing. Halflings yeah. might have a one. And then that just basically determines how you're perceived. Which inherently, as a DM, we generally tend to make anyways. Yeah. But it's, it's basically just, having... just a rule to sort of fill in what, you know, you could probably already be doing as a DM. Yeah. And then it also comes to the whole thing of um, if you have something like Renown, like, it's good. I... My main thing is... No, it's very blunt. Hmm? It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, I I was considering adding that to my own hero campaign for quite a while. But there is a lot of stuff that comes with adding something like that. For example, the fact that then you can no longer use standard character sheets. You've got to add something. But I wonder actually if there's a character sheet builder, like in terms of building your own character sheet. If there's not, there should be one. Because that would be quite good. Hmm. But, yeah, that's a whole thing. Um, what else? Inherently, I don't know, there's a lot to go off of, I suppose. 
I am liking the aesthetic of um, uh, adding land and then subtracting it. Yeah, it gives that sort of residual, like, tiny islands that are there. And inherently by having a lot of islands and pointing out the islands, it almost gives the, the reason or the knowledge that at some point you could run a very aquatic-based adventure. I know, I was thinking pirates would be neat. Yeah. Because keep in mind, if, if you're building it in the same way that um, the J.R.R. Tolkien builds his, where you have your overall land mass and then a bunch of stories that take place within that land mass. Yeah. Because especially, I, I would say it's actually probably a good thing that you're keeping it l very unscience, or like very science, mm. what's the word? Science free. Yeah. <laughs> um, it inherently gives rise that, you know, you could have any number of stories happen. You could have it where at some point you could say, oh, well, you know, there's this massive, massive event where the moon collapses down onto the earth mm. and it creates a large crater. And then you don't have people being like, oh, but wouldn't that have destroyed the Earth or cracked it in half? Because no, it's... shut the fuck up. Yeah, no, <laughs> I say no, therefore I am the DM sort of thing. Whereas mm. having some science adjacency. I, if you remember when we had the isle, the Rotan floating isles drop down yeah. onto the continent, yeah. everyone was like, hang on, but wouldn't that literally split, split the continent in half? And I was like, oh, fuck, let me have a quick check, uh, look through my notes. Yeah, it's like a con it's like a floating island the size of New South Wales that's roughly like this big and would probably weigh like, you know, this much. What's the necessary force to split open a, a continent? Yeah. yeah, that's probably or actually I think it was what's the necessary force to um I think we way past the lethal limit for the planet. But you know, since I didn't want it to be like, oh, end of campaign, everyone's dead. Yeah, because we we're like, uh, remember Age of Ultron? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So, um, yeah, we we ended up like retcon retconning that, but of course, you know, there had to be some degree of well, not retconning, but like changing that. So, but with that point, there had to be some yeah, that's level what retconning of retconning is chief. Well, change. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm saying we didn't really retcon it. It was more of the thing still happened. It's just that we, like... Soft retcon. Yeah, we, like, changed... Look at that. That. That's pretty fresh. Good stuff. You like... might want to also save it, by the way. The thing was popping up and oh, saying yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Um... Bottom left-hand corner. Oh, bottom left-hand corner. Yes. Wow, the save button. Yes, and then choose your name. Oh, yeah, no, that's no. looking pretty fresh. And then the Discworld. other thing is... That not theoretically... to be confused with the... Uh... Hmm? I'm calling it Discworld, but not to be confused with the... Uh... The what is it? The Lucas Arts game. Well, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> played any Lucas Arts game called Discworld. I think Lu uh, it's probably not Lucas Arts, but there was a point and click adventure called Discworld. Fair. I mean, point and click is way before my time. There was um. Uh, yeah, the, so the, the few Discworld. months that you've got on me have separated it being before my time, but also <laughs> during your time. It's, yeah. Uh, so it's. Like a giant turtle going through space, with four elephants on its back, and on their backs holding the disc world. That sounds wacky. And like the sun and the moon go over the disc, and then between the legs of the elephants. Right. Yeah. Fucking weird. Yeah. Is that based off of some religion, or is it like? I don't even fucking know. Yeah, because that sounds really wacky. Sounds like something you it's would disc pull world, off of. It? I suppose. Sounds like something you would pull off of, like, an acid trip, I imagine. But yeah, so, it seems the top left-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner seem kind of bare. I imagine yeah. you're still getting to that. Yeah. I mean, that being said, it is also okay to have a bit of land, a bit of water. Bit of water. Yeah. Um, looks at the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, this looks a bit bare to me, Chief. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it literally is, I suppose. Like, thing is, water can also be convenient. Like, if you're going out for, like, a sea... Because, well, there's also the potential of having things under the water. Under the sea, perhaps? Yes. All under right. the sea. I'm thinking maybe over here. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's also think what sort of biomes we're looking at at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, I've got... Um... Because I know, if I'm not mistaken, you're going very Earth-based biomes, yeah. I'm guessing. 
in terms of the north bit is almost guaranteed to be a tundra. Yep. Um, down the south is very hot, I'm guessing. Yep. So, what I'm thinking is, actually, I can probably... Yeah. Uh, change this a bit. Continents and land masses. Making it look a bit more Europey. Yeah, fair. This, that's supposed to be the the Italy, I guess. Italy's over here. Oh, okay, fair. So you're using... Uh, actually, that kind of makes sense, because I know around the pillar, you've kind of got a massive city where the main... Build, on, where the big battle or the big bad is supposed to be. Yeah. I don't know if it's the big bad, but the, like, emperor is supposed yeah, to be there. Yeah, I feel like big bad is objectively not a good term here, because yeah, it's more going of... from, like, you know, that Tolkienian build. It's, um... Uh, you know, that's saying big bad makes it focus on the characters yeah. rather than the world they inhabit. Yeah, that's true. And uh, he is the antagonist of presumably. There we go. Look at that. A, quite an area, I imagine. What's that? The Vulcan Sea. Is that what that's called? Oh, the Vulcan Sea. Vulcan. Vulcan. Baltic. Ah, oh, right. The Baltic Sea. So yeah, I'm guessing you're making it very European esque. Yeah. See, look at that. That's fucking um, Europe's Down syndromic cousin. <laughs> Understandable, yeah. I mean, hey, that works, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, hey, it looks pretty fresh either way. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, and so there's a large amount of tundra up along the top, I'm guessing. Hmm. Then, if I'm not mistaken, tundra then sort of shifts into rainforest as it gets lower. So there wouldn't be much rainforest. Rainforest would probably only be on this continent. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we just made the sort of leg that comes out up, yeah, just there. Yeah. That sort of, um, in my head, I kind of see that as possibly being alike to uh, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea. I guess so. But this is kind of being like my um, sort of uh, Asia. Um, yeah, that, like, sort of style area. Yeah. There. So... You know, I'm not going for like <clears throat> too much analogy or anything. Asian -y stuff. Yeah. I like it being there. I want it somewhere. Yeah, because then you can have sushi and well, like Asian culture sort of thing out of uh, I like uh, that it's present, that there's some sort of Asia analog. Yeah. But, you know, because this is a um, kind of like a um, mythological European kind of perspective on it. Yeah, it is still to the east, it seems. It's to the very eastern land. out of the way. Yeah. Can I move this? Move what? Like, am I able to... I don't believe so, not with that thing. I think the selecting only works with... Um, oh, only well. works with the actual stuff you put down, like the stamps. Oh, well. Which is a bit of a bummer, because God knows I would love to be able to do that. Just like, ah, oh, take this bit of land, copy it, and we'll put it over here. But yeah, because... Well, then the other question, the important question is, okay, how... Well, I suppose it's not really too applicable in fantasy, but, like, you know, if, if we're doing, like, a small amount of representation for a certain group, how do they fit in, generally? So, theoretically, they're on a small island. That means that their resources would probably be very... How do I put it? I imagine it would be more fishing based. Yeah. Because inherently, like, that's the thing is each gr each area has a certain basis around what the land is like. Islands tend to be very fishing, very, you know, that sort of stuff. And then depending on what resources they have present, you can have stuff like industrial areas. If copper's present, for example, you'd probably have a decent abundance of, like, you know, rough industrialization sort mm. of stuff i feel like the elves and the japanese or not the japanese but you know the the uh sort of asian yeah the analogs e yeah yeah are quite similar in how they function and both their position on the world what um hating the dwarfs <laughs> <laughs> hating dwarfs <laughs> um, that's a joke yeah um <laughs> no like a pr as in like what, presumably, like, protecting nature sort of stuff? Yeah, they'd be very, sort of, 
uh, nature either. Elves is definitely more so. Oh, definitely. I mean, I imagine the Eastern Analog, I presume there'd, there'd be a joke about having a land war in Asia and, <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff, the Vietnamese war. So, naturally, they'd want to have a good agri- agricultural situation. Yeah. Um, I presume, to some degree, food would be relatively equivalent. You know, you'd still have your cows and your sheep and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, theoretically, food would be equivalent, but there would be the addition of, like, oh, you can have rock meat sort of thing. Or it's, like, meat from a rock, if you can somehow manage to take down a rock. Which, also, Hmm. aren't rocks only, like, challenge rating, like, 12 or something? Yeah, but that's still quite high. I mean, yeah, true. But because I remember back in Mastermind's campaign when he had a rock fly over us and we were like level 8 where we were all like shitting ourselves like oh fuck let's not oh let's prefer it wasn't to really not flying over us but he described it as being in the distance yeah yeah I'm pretty sure we did want to avoid it regardless because we don't need to you're doing the pirate stuff pirate area fair fair welcome to the pirate zone technically pirates would be everywhere everywhere but this is like little you have their pirate like proper pirate cove base area yeah because it's like this is quite far from the Empire. It's mm-hmm. quite out of the way. Yeah. It's like a little pirate empire. Fair. Hmm. It almost looks like you got fingers, like, kind of reaching around from the left. Yeah. That could be kind of cool. You have, like, the residual fingers of... Because uh, we haven't really talked about what's off the edge of the island, if that's, like, the Astral Sea or something. Um, you go from, like, land to Astral Sea. And then yeah. you could theoretically have, like, an, some large you know, Cthulhu-esque beast that, like, has tried to, like, grab onto the island and has been, like, ripped off or something. Mm. Though that would explain why water would be there and not land, I suppose. Um, yeah. Oh, that could be cool. Like, um, you have it so, like, a Cthulhu beast-style thing, like, yeah. grabbed onto the land and the gods, in an attempt to stop it, have, have like, chopped Chippy off... Chippy slapped it. Yeah, they, like, chopped off the fingers. <laughs> Chippy slapped And it, like, reeled backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, like, slap it real hard. And, and like, like, that's left behind... Land. Chippy slap them, but, but that could be very off. interesting as well because if it's theoretically organic meat that's there and that they're living on, that would then fertilize the soil quite well. I like well. how also I was um, I was considering like there was something that I found, yeah, and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to talk about this to anyone that could potentially be playing the campaign. Fair, <laughs> and uh, then I think like last podcast or something, I mentioned it, and everyone's like, oh, and I'm like, Sh- fuck, should have said nothing. I don't actually remember, <laughs> to be fair. Fair, fair. It was the mind mine. Mind mine? The mind mine. Mind mine. Yeah. I feel like I had... Don't look it up. I feel like I had an aneurysm <laughs> every time I said it. No, I, uh, I was in Discord with um, Sam and Matt last night, and they were playing TF2, and apparently there's a horseless, headless horseman, and that is the most fucking fun thing to say. I was like... Horseless, headless horseman? Yes. The horseless, headless horseman. It's a horseman. It's headless. But he has a horse. That's wow. you're not, not there. He no longer has a horse. He used to have a horse. There's horseless now. He used to be a man horse. <laughs> I believe they're called uh, bronies. No. Oh, no. Um, I mean, yeah, no. It was one of those things where it was uh, it was quite interesting and very fun to say over and over and over again. This just looks kind of like flooded Tasmania. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Seems good. Apparently, um, Sir Matthew has... Um, he's just like, I'll head around soon. Sounds nice. good. You want to join in on on Dandy stream? Yeah. Something that I quite liked in Mastermind's uh, campaign. Yep. Is the map. Yeah, yeah. Because like, he hand drew it as well, didn't he? Oh yeah, one he hand drew it. Two, which I know you very much enjoy. He gave us fucking nothing. Oh, true. He's yeah. like, yep, it's an old map. Uh, not a very good one. <laughs> Yeah, oh, because, yeah, because theoretically it was a low-tier map that we got for free. Yeah, that would have been like, filled in. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Because, yeah, that's the other thing is um, filling in a map is always fun, um, especially if you've got a, a, de- a designated cartographer or you say, like, hey, this is a map for you to fill in. Um, and Because I always enjoy that in games and stuff where you have mm. to, like, go and... a lot. It's shown in a lot of ways with, like, the game, you know, games where you have to like climb a tower or a monument to steal yep. and stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Breath of the Wild had it, and I know it's well, pretty any uh, Ubisoft. Yeah, game. I was, I, was gonna say, I wasn't sure whether it was Ubisoft, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Ubisoft games it have it generally. 
Um, I do enjoy stuff like that where it's like, you don't know what's there, but... I mean, Fallout New Vegas had a similar thing. You go there, you well, find a location, and it feels yeah. different than that. Um, I do like that sort of stuff, though it is one of those things where ahead of time you probably want to say, hey, if you want to be, like, there is a position of, like, I expect you to be filling in the map. Whoever wants to be the cartographer of the group, do that, and probably be a wizard or an artificer, so, or maybe an eldritch knight. Something intelligence-based, I imagine, would be able to do it. So you, behind the screen, would have it all filled in. But as they go to places, you'd be like, oh, fill this one in, fill this one in, sort of thing. And there was a similar, there was a video made by, oh, who was it? Uh, Matthew Colville, who he was talking about a different style of D&D, where I believe we've talked about it previously in the past, I think. I want to see, ch- I want to say churn marches, but I know my, I know the churn marches were, was a map that I made. Let me quickly verify. Um... Let's take a quick old look. Uh, Matthew Colville. Matthew Colville, if I can spell it correctly, that'd be nice. Matthew Colville, quickly scroll through. Um, you know, I think it'd be really cool to get like a group of like well-known DMs together. So you get like Matthew Colville, you get like um, Matt uh, Matt Mercer, you get. Um, Probably Griffin from the Adventure Zone. Like, you get a bunch of, like, well-known, like, internet DMs. And you get them all to talk about D&D and stuff. That'd be pretty awesome, I imagine. Um, it's something Marches, I believe. West Marches, that's the one. Um, yeah, so West Marches, I believe, was where essentially you say to, like, a group of, like, 20 people, Hey, you guys all have your characters. Now, what I'm going to do is every day that passes in real life is a day that passes in the game. Message me whenever you want to run a session, and it's up to you guys to create or to pick a part or pick people for your party and go out and explore stuff. Here is like these few maps or these few notes, so you know this, you know that, and talk to each other. Say, like, you know, so say if we have our full group of friends, you could go to Brett, for example, and be like, hey, I hear you're looking for a crystal which allows you to, you know, do this thing. I happen to know of a rumor. That at this place, at this... I think I found the capital. You found the capital? Ooh, that looks fresh. Um, yeah, having a place where, you know, be like, oh, I know this dungeon where we might be able to find... It. There's rumours that it's there, and you might be there, or might not. Think about how great these fucking islands would look. Oh, it'd be pretty fresh. They would, like, imagine sunset on the edge. Oh, yeah, you'd get well, a It wouldn't really be of... setting, because you're... Yeah. It would be like... Rather than going behind the horizon, it's like, just keeps going. <laughs> it's just lowering. Yeah. But it, you'd be able to say, like, oh, hey, Brett, and maybe Xander. Let's go do this. And then Xander goes, oh, well, I'll tag in as well. But next time I need something, you... Well, next time I need something, I've got to be able to call on you for this sort of thing. Mm. And then, you know, you go out, you do the... Like, you come to me or whoever's DMing, and you say, hey, we've got this group. Um, hold on, there's a... I'm receiving a phone call. Yes, okay, fair. Um, I shall, in that case, I'll hold off on, um, continuing because I'm also in t- telling everyone, or telling Chris what's happening, so we'll just hold off for the moment. Um, we may, however, be joined by Matthew, momentarily. Um, do, 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 do. um... Quickly respond to this. There we go. Boop. Because, yes, I am uploading videos now, unfortunately. And believe it or not, I'm a busy person. I stayed up till midnight trying to get the videos all edited and rend- rendering and uploaded. Unfortunately, I can only do so much. I only have so much time on my hands, especially being a uni student. So yes, that's all. Thank yeah, you. Got gravy? Uh, we can make gravy if we don't, yeah. Alright, cool. Um, but yeah, we've only got so much time on our hands, and I am cool. 
Well, I've done as much as I can. Quickly respond to this. Sounds good. But yes, so, unfortunately, yes, I do need to upload them, and I do need to do this, because either I'm going to upload them all at once, or I'm going to forget, because I'm horrible with keeping stuff going, and, you know, uploading things, and I am entering a period of time where I have to do a lot of university work, so that's a whole thing. They're all being uploaded at once. It's better that we have one stream that's a bit laggy while I'm uploading and then the rest of them be all good because everything's all uploaded, or we have passive time where it's all not uploading, and I see Matthew turning up. Let me quickly move my way over here. Hello there, how's it going? Um, you might want to mic up real quick, because um, I think Chris is in a call at the moment, so until... He is done. You're welcome to use this. We're, just, we're going through and I basically was like, Chris, let's make a map. And so you can rip. You just need Great. a corner of the, the table there. That looks yeah, very uncomfortable. Oh, no, I'm sitting here. Oh, um, Chris is just sitting over there, so it's all good. But yeah, I'm just basically like talking, doing random stuff. Because I'm uploading like six videos at the moment. And I know Yuri was like hella edgy that it was a bit laggy for us to stream. And I'm just like, Believe it or not, I can't really do much. So either I upload them all now, or there aren't going to be videos for the next week while I do uni work, so, you know, that's a whole thing. But, um, yes, if you zoom out, I think you can do, or if you just click down to the magnifying glass, since you've got controls at this point, you should be able to zoom in and out and stuff. And you might need to just make sure that the lavalier mic is, like, decently between the two of you. It should be fine either way. Oh, but, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, It's all good. You can clip it on if you want. Cock and ball to uh, well, if you talk, I can because I've got all the chat and this stuff because the way it's set up. Oh, yeah. So right, cock and ball like, torture. Yeah, okay, I can see it peaking. Peaking. Well, not peaking, but like moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I was trying to make a sex joke there. Understandable, yes. Uh, Did you see the um the fucking smell the meme I put into the chat last night? Or it was uh, crock and ball torture because it was like I don't remember who it was. Hang on, let me bring it up real quick. But it was uh, something from Smash or something. I don't know. Let me quickly find it so I can be sure on what it was. Just got to find the right chat because we've got so many chats at this point. I don't know which ones are which. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Crock and ball torture. Huh? I just hear Katrina upstairs talking to um to Dash, and apparently Mitch just sent me a TikTok. You found the crock and ball. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Piston. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, it was the Minecraft Steve Piston, and it shoots the King K. rule onto the, the onto Minecraft the torture chair. To yeah, the torture chair. <laughs> yes, it's a classic. But yes, we, um, but yeah, so I decided it would be a good idea, because we've done, we've recorded like three videos already of like, going through and doing BuzzFeed quizzes and uh, Portimore quizzes and stuff, and it's pretty fresh. Oh, yeah. Um, and I figured, okay, let's do some D&D, &D. let's um, actually like make a map or something. So, yeah, I've got Chris on the controls making the map and such. So, yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll switch seats with him because then he can have full control from that. Yeah, yeah. That's check pretty my, fresh. Check hopefully. Out my new level is set up. Yeah, hopefully that works. I mean, it's, it is definitely louder than not having it attached. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh correction. It's definitely louder than not speaking into it. Yeah. Oh, I'll just put that there. That's yeah, I mean. that's fair. <clears throat> but, yeah. The other option is that you can come sit over here if you want, and because I've got my one here, I can just like put it on my shoulder or something, and then das, we should be able to. Das ist a good idea. Yes. Oh, yeah, man beast. Yes, man boss. Tybo. All right. And I guess I'll just I can just hold it like this, and actually works pretty well. A bit spooky. Yes. Hell to the yeah, bitches. Hell yeah. Ooh. But yes. So in other news, we're all learning French over here, Dash, and Dash is now entering. Excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hello, wee one. Hello, Smith. dog. Are you baby? Wait. Are you tiny? Use tiny. Oh, yes, and there's you. Lily. Lily. <laughs> Dash has got the whole, like, arm up on you, on your yes. leg. It's yeah, like, yeah. hello there. Come here often. Are you smelling a poodles? Yeah, Lily seems to probably be able to smell, uh... 
Smell your dog on her. Beatrice. Yes, you wish. I can't remember who it was, but I think it was when we were, when we were in Discord. Someone mm. said that, uh, it might have been Emma, uh, thought that when you said Beatrice, that you named your dog Beet Rice. No, uh, yeah, Beetroot. Yeah. And then she's like, Beetroot. And I'm like, bro, how do you get that wrong? Yeah, I mean, it's like a pretty common name. In like, I mean, well, not common, but like, yeah, you get the idea. Yes. All right. All right. I barely get the hang up button on it, so I have to do it. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> That's understandable. But yes, I've just been giving uh, giving Matt the rundown oh, of the Lily, situation. Lily, come on out. Get the fuck out, Lily. And before yeah, you Lily open the outside. door, and she just like, and then Dash just walks in again. <laughs> Nah, it's probably better that she's out while we're recording, given that she has a tendency to like pull the mic down and everything. Table, just yank on that. Yeah, mm, you want to have oh. everything stable. Let's not have that actually. But right, yes, back okay. To island making. Yes. So, uh, should we give Matt the quick rundown of what's been done so far? Uh, yeah. Uh, what was that? We just did quizzes and. Well, yeah, quizzes and uh, I meant more to show him the actual like full map at the moment, oh, but. Yeah. Seems like you're riding your bike to French, um, and I'm like, nah, Dad said it's going to rain. And he's yeah. like, Rip, reckon you can pick me up? <laughs> About that, Chief. <laughs> Already there. Oof. Yeah, just send, a, just send a photo of my face, <laughs> bro. I just sent a picture of my head here. Fair. Understandable. But yeah, and I suppose, um, depending on, I can't actually read how long we've been recording for. I think that's like 46 minutes. 46, yeah. So when we reach, like, give it 15 minutes uh, to about an hour. And then we'll wrap it up there. We can continue at another point in time. It's pretty we draw an archipelago. Yes. Oh, so, there's lots of them. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening. No, I reckon that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because yeah. it's actually, it makes sense. You can imagine there's just an intrusion going through a once ma- more massive continent. Yeah. Which then can lie to story being like ancient temples at the bottom of that inside mm. ocean. Well, I would put some ancient temples down there. Because, uh... Mm. Um... So that I'm very much going for like a, if you may have noticed, kind of like a European, mm, like Dead Sea sort of shit. Yes. Uh, oh, so is it Red Sea? That's one? the Mediterranean. Oh yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Fair. Like there's a largest internal like inland ocean somewhere in Europe. Mm. Um, yeah. I think that's the Red Sea. I think that's the Red Sea. Yeah, that's yeah. the Red Sea. And then the or Dead is Sea is the Caspian the... Sea. I, I think Red Sea because I heard it somewhere in like. Top gear or something. Um, Bottom gear. I'm Bottom horrible gear. at geography. I think we all know uh, this. No, wait, yeah, no. I'm bad at it. So, that's like, so the Red Sea is kind of like here on Africa. Mm, yeah. So I don't think that's an internal sea. I know. Right. Fair. No, oh, yeah. Fair enough. I think then, like yeah. the Dead Sea was the very salty one. The Dead you Sea is the salty one. Yeah. You float on. Sam playing TF two. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That's saltier just... than the Dead Sea. Yes. Um. I, I feel like it's the Caspian Sea, which is like around here. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. boys, I'm gonna get that. You looking at a new bike already? Yes. Pretty fresh. It looks like a much smaller bike than the yeah, other it's, ones. It's a baby bike. Fair. Oh yeah. Get that around, just be <laughs> around the street. Because as much as I love riding my other bike, it is fucking massive, and I got a good sense of that the other day when I went for an off-road ride. Sitting yeah. there, it puts out so much torque. You see me do this on a gravel road. And you just see the black back wheel just go out of from behind me. It's pretty epic. Yeah. It's really it's really fun. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's fresh. very heavy. Like yeah. I hopped onto my other the yellow one that you saw. Yeah. And that's yeah. a baby compared to mine. Look at this. Yeah, that's understandable. Asia sort of analogue. Yeah. So I mean I guess you've got yourself a little bit of a Korea slash Japan slash port Papua New Guinea and whatnot there. Yeah. I mean when I first saw it I was like, oh it's like New Zealand almost but um does look a bit like New Zealand. Yeah. But yeah, so if you see to the left, I don't know if this is what Chris is going for, but it looks like, I don't know, it looks like it's almost like fingers grabbing onto the side. It's a pretty fresh. Um, but yeah, there's a room for stuff in the top corner. So naturally, this is of course a massive land, like, or massive map of like, you know, an entire planet's worth of stuff, theoretically. I'm trying to make this a bit northier, because, um, this region down here, yep. I call that the Boiling Sea. Boiling Sea, fair. And uh, I don't so know if there's many pirates in the Boiling Sea. Yeah, well, the other thing to think about is if it's boiling, then there's going to be a lot of steam, naturally. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have everything from water elementals to air elementals to fire elementals. 
I reckon it'd be cool if you added like a further intrusion into the northeastern part of that continent and have that like a boiling sea. Like you can imagine like that northeastern part's more desert. And it gets like and it's really down on the ground and there's no tree cover, so it gets to like forty plus degrees. So like the boiling sea around here? Or? Oh, north, north. Well, no. it depends on where you kind of. So want. I think heat is down at the bottom. So you want it to be hotter south. Chilly down. Uh, it's hot. hot. I was gonna say it's hot here and chilly oh, here. You should also oh, probably mic off as well, by the way. It just occurred to me that I think you've got the mic there. Oh. And that does the ear mic. Yes. There we go. So, I don't know if they could have heard you for that entire time. Um, it's fine. I'll just crank up the audio and then use the equalization. What were we saying? Fix it. Matt? Yeah. What were we oh, saying about? An intrusion using, see that little further intrusion to the northeast of your ocean there? Uh, northeast, like. Do you? Uh, yeah. Do I have the key, correct key there? Where, where Where's north on your map? Well, north. Yeah, northeast. So you go down just a little bit south. Oh, See that? you're talking that water, right, yeah. water there. there? Yeah, yeah. Maybe take that in a tiny bit further, and then make that area up there. If it's if it's hotter up there, and it matches no. your thing. No, so, so this, is, hot is, this is cold. Okay, yeah. So I don't know. Make it make. It would be cool just to add like a hot sea. You know, it's mm. salty and hot. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the water sort yeah. of around here would yeah. be. Well, the other thing to note is if you want to start slapping down some paint, we have. Uh, I've got a bunch of. Um, Markers essentially for what the land would be like uh, if you go into the paintbrush tool, um, where essentially it's um, we've got the the like molten like black and red sort of texture. We've got ice. We've got like everything essentially that you would need to denote certain land or certain biomes essentially. Mm. Um, I just thought hmm, interesting little idea here. Yeah. If I just do quick little thin. Uh, Bits here, kind of like an aquatic mountain range. Yeah, I can't see that. Separating the um, boiling sea. Well, how? So, okay, let's take a quick moment to think of like hot water inherently is going to rise upwards. So, if you've got a lot of hot water rising up, there's going to be an equal amount coming down. Yeah, so you, you would get forest. fucked going into that water. You would be pulled under immediately. Just like going oh, like. <gasps> yeah, pretty much. Oh, I mean, it'd just be like. You'd be okay on one side, and the other side. Oh yeah, side boiling is water's a lot less dense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but see, that's why I wanted your uh, it to be more bit more inland, because you know it will equalize to the average temperature of the ocean. Mm. Yeah. So you know, unless the whole ocean's fifty degrees. You know, yeah, that's what that I'm thinking as well. Because be... the original thing I was thinking of, what's the, what happens when hot water meets cold water? It's just going to equalize. Uh, of course, hot water is going to go up, cold water is going to go down, which then heats up and creates. I never at, understood at the that of... about. Uh... Uh, in Minecraft, soul, sta soul sand and uh, oh yeah, magma. I really hate the way it does that because like soul sand falls down. Well, you'd think that magma if it's cool. because you know magma creates hot water upflow of water, yeah, so it'd push you up, mm. and then um, soul sand, I know, it produces gas or some shit, yeah, which would lower the density of the water, making you just fucking fall through that shit. That would be. That's why I like the idea of it being like an inland sea where there is like yeah. maybe ancient temples and there are parts where it's really hot. You could say like it's got a lot of um, natural gas and stuff. Natural gas and yeah, just like fumaroles and stuff. So you can imagine a lot of tectonic activity there. So you yeah. have like spots where it's like welling really hot and it's heated up the water extensively around it. So there's like one fumarole under there heating it up hard. Mm. So you just ships just go and yeah. smash into like an underground spot. Oh, now, now wait, hang on. Does coral do good in heat or cold? They do well in cold. Okay, so... Bad what? in heat, they yeah. like bleach. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Because I was going to say, if coral did well in heat, then... Oh, no, there'd be tons of different types of coral. True, yeah. Like, normal coral, coral. At, at the thing, I would be shit. Well, yeah, because the other thing I was thinking of, well, because, you know, coral's up near the equator, essentially. Mm. I suppose it's like, once it gets too hot, that's when it starts Oh, well, it's just specialised, like, coral here... It's used to the temperatures of the ocean here, coral there. True, true. The temps, isn't it? So it can have coral. Yeah, yeah. Like, have like you seen hot those... coral, like fire coral, that gives it that sort of orangey red? Sort yeah, of have you seen those six meter long worms? I can fucking put in fire coral. No, I don't believe. Oh, actually, so like, under yeah. under like deep water where there is no life, there is life. Yeah. Because there's like big the heat spouts columns. of yeah. yeah heat columns, and they create their own ecosystems because yeah. of the energy. And they have these massive six meter long tube worms. Bro. Yeah, I've seen those. And they leave their shell. They have a shell. And it's just yeah, it's like a shell, and they just like. Red. And you touch it, go. They suck themselves in. It's good. <laughs> fair, fair. 
actually, you know, I'll look at it. And yeah, they have their own ecosystems there, so you could have like very specialized animals in that area. Yeah. It's pretty fresh. It's a fumarole leaf. Let's cause some erosion. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, because I imagine like the hot water would work really well, especially sticking on that hot hot water. So that's where life shouldn't be, and it's just them. Yeah, that's like whack. Just just vibing. So okay, they're snails ones that yeah, have same. iron shells. The what ones? Have you seen those snails that have iron shells? Proper iron shells. Do yep. they live at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's sick. Their shells are just straight up fucking iron. Because there's just an abundance of it. Because they build literally off the side. They're just far enough away where they don't get boiled alive. Yeah. But they're just enough so that they can pluck nutrients out of the water. Yeah. And obviously, with the thing that he just said, solid iron shells, there's such an abundance of raw minerals under there that mm. a snail can make a solid iron shell. Brief. That'd be worth money on the market, I reckon, eh? Well, yeah, they're quite worth, quite rare. Yeah, they're quite rare. Could you, could you imagine actually having a natural, organic, ferrous iron mm. seashell? That's worth millions, That'd I That'd be pretty fresh. Hmm. Just thinking, because theoretically, if you were to take that idea of like a crab or a snail right. or like a metal shell, and then expand it upwards, thinking like you know what we're talking about before with those um, those things in the monster manual while we're doing the um, pretty fresh, while we're thinking um, that those like big old worm things that ate metal, so uh, those the, things um, that have a metal shell, the rust monsters. Yeah, yeah. Like imagine like a crab that like. If we're talking like rusted, like car, like shells, essentially, you have like a creature that like digs into it and like use it as like a shell. That'd be kind of cool. But at that point, you're talking like bigger, more kind like concerning monsters and rusted, like mo rusted modernness and stuff. And that is a lot of two worms. Yeah, that, that's a big colony, and you can see all the other creatures that inhabit around it too. Yeah, they've got like eels and crabs. They're all white because they don't need color. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't need color when you're that low in the water. Yeah, it's like if there wasn't that huge beam of light being shone by the submarine, it's gonna be pitch black. Oh yeah. So nothing even needs eyes. Yeah. Interesting. A new Minecraft yeah. mod. Yeah, I was about to say, what is this? A new Minecraft update? Oh. One point seventeen. Have you heard much about that? No, I haven't. Ooh, Ooh it's fresh. Zola crew boys. You yeah. can imagine that like a big one. You could say sort of like a um, behir. <laughs> Fair, yeah. But yeah, there's a new mob in 1.17 that bases, or that hears off of sound. Hears off sound? Yes. <laughs> well, it senses enemies based off of sound and stuff. It's That's pretty actually fresh. pretty sick. Yeah. Holy crap, it that lives in scary. An, It lives in a new underground biome called the Deep Dark. Ooh. Good shit. That sounds awesome. I can't yeah. wait for that update. Yeah, because it, it, it has massive caves and stuff. It looks real awesome. That's good, because you, 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 I always feel like it's lacking. I mean, yeah. you can find pretty extensive caves, and it's like, okay, and then it's like, oh, stone. It's like, oh, yes, stone monster. Stone. You know, so there's the lush forest biome, or lush underground caves biome with axolotls. Um, That's sick. Yeah, like, you get berries growing down from the ceiling and all this sort of stuff. It's kind of cool. That's pretty good, man. Um, there's... Stalactites and stalagmites now. Um, massive open expanses of caves with local water levels. So you looking can, like, fresh. Through. It looks really awesome. And yeah, the map is looking, looking pretty fresh as well. Scotland! Scotland! Yes. It's pretty solid. Imagine living up in one of these shitty fucking areas. <laughs> I mean, you'd be really cold. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> I mean, I presume that's where you'd find giants, I imagine. Yeah, yeah well, it depends Amazon on uh, Prime, which I've... giants you're looking for. Well, yeah, true. Frost giants, that sort of stuff. Yeah, you'd find so frost giants. I've got there. Amazon Prime, right? And there yep. was a, um, an anime that someone co called... Anime? Called, called Vinland. <laughs> oh, Vinland. Uh, saga Vinland Saga. It's all yeah. about friggin' um, Vikings and shit. And it's fully, it's fully awesome. Like, you see in the opening thing, you see a dude... Eat some mushroom and just go, bah, I'm going to stick on the. Yeah. So I have actually seen the, the icon for Vin Vinland Saga. I do reckon it would be good to watch with the boys. Yeah. Got to organise that boys movie night. Boys so movie I night. also met uh, Xander's girlfriend today. Oh, wow. Yeah, because. The they, elusive one. Uh, well, I mean, elusive. Well, <laughs> Xander's elusive. Xander is not elusive. Xander's elusive, so that makes her. Yeah. Hello. Hi, howdy, howdy. Um, yeah, no, but because he came, because he, he messaged me before I woke up, being like, hey, can I borrow Mario Kart? My one has gone missing. And I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, oh, I'll bring over Legend of Zelda. And I'm like, cool. If you're just like, one yeah. condition, give me Legend of Zelda. Oh, no, I, no he's true. He was one who said it. I, I have asked him in the past, though, can I borrow Legend of Zelda again? I want to do a master mode run. 
Also, have you played Legend of Zelda? No. It's good uh, shit. Toby's got it on his Switch at home, so I'll just nick it. He True. Play it. Fair, fair. Oh, it's funny. Seb came over and is like, uh, do you have my copy of Call of Duty World War Two? And I'm like, uh, I don't think so. But I think my brother has a copy, so you can have that. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh. So, I don't know where my one's gone. I'm like, just keep it. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't care. Yeah, that's what, that's what he gets for being a little shit and getting I mean, arrested. I mean, he did. Did he get arrested? Oh. I mean, keep what in mind this is on stream. Do you want to be talking about this on stream? No, I'll talk to you about it later. It's hilarious. Oh, okay, crap. fair, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a whole bit of a meme. Uh, so you know what I'm thinking? I'm looking at this not from a geography view, but from uh, Earth and environmental science view. Yeah, and I'm because we did because you did that at, in high school. Yeah, I'm looking at mad tectonic. Uh, tectonic plates kind of stuff going on here. Mm. So you see where you put your star as like the axis for like north, south, west, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and that's also where pin is. Mm. So you see that center of the well, world. Yeah, so that's the center. So you see at that center there from that little piece of land. So you said that you want that to be cliffs. Uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, I could oh, very I mean, much like see mountains. it as rocky plateaus. Uh, so sort of I'd area. put uh mountain range like hereish. Actually, that could be kind of cool, where it's like a big mountain kind of leading up into the center of the pin. Because yeah, what I was thinking, what's really cool mm. is with um with uh mountain ranges like that, say ones that are inland, they have really slow, slow cooling magmas and whatnot, mm. and that forms really hard rocks. Yeah. Nothing like sandstone that you'd see worn yeah. away at the edges. Which it would make mm. sense where the pin is, especially. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm picturing here is that mountain range is the only bits that survive because all of the softer shit's been worn away by the yeah. mountain around it. So it's just a mountain range sticking out of the ground. Yep. Yes. That's so I mean, I mean, out of the water, which would be pretty cool. Yes. I'm just giving you ideas. What I like to do is with the world is say I think I did it with the Citadel yeah, map Citadel a little Tora, bit. Yeah. I just kind of drew lines through it, giving it tectonic plates, so then you could build mountain ranges. And yeah. All that shit kind of off that give yep. your world some. Well, I mean, like, you could just say it's on one not massive tectonic plane. There's not really much action going on. Like, do you have volcanoes anywhere? Uh, well, volcanoes wouldn't be... Hello. Can you fix the internet, please? Uh, yeah. internet should be working. We're currently using it. Well, can you go sort it out upstairs so I've got internet? Okay, I will do so in a moment. Thank you, Dad. Oh, good. Um, yeah, so it's volcanoes. I'm uploading, like, six videos right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, um... I'd probably... So volcanoes would be very scarce around the con the this the northern North continent, yeah. but um, they'd be fucking everywhere down here. So what I'm thinking is, what I like the idea is maybe it's one massive continent and it's moving up. Mm. Say the tectonic plates moving up, and there's a hot spot right where your pin is. So you can have maybe a mountain range going cutting into it there. Because mm. say what what a hot spot is, right? It's where the mantles thin out and a lot of magma. Shit's Keep in up. mind, this is also a disc planet. A disc, or, yeah, disc, disc world. All right, never mind. So Tectonics okay. doesn't matter on a disc world. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, hmm. I'm taking this very, taking this advice very lightly. Yeah, no, yeah. I. Now that I know what's how the world truly is. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes have been opened. <laughs> My eyes have been opened. What do you make of that, atheist? <laughs> <laughs> Checkmate. Hmm. Yes. There you go. Let's uh, put Sicily here. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, um, if you want to give us a quick zoom out, we can probably outro the video. We can keep working on it while we're uh, while we're here. But um, I imagine streaming is also probably killing the internet for everyone else. Yeah, you so, used up like ninety hundred percent of your bandwidth. Oh yeah, I'm probably using <laughs> quite a lot of it right now. Um, but yeah, so either way, it's uh, pretty fresh. I think we'll keep just working on it over the next while uh, before we start French, and then we can continue to stream putting in color and actually like giving it a bit of flavor so as usual hope you enjoyed all that good sort of stuff let's see if i can hit the end recording button looking at the keyboard upside down i, I already know where it is it's the top corner you've actually like moved it away uh, from me all right thanks go. for watching and goodbye